Well, my friends, I'm back from vacation and a lot has happened. Got lots to tell you about. So stay tuned to right after this and we'll get right into it. My friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. It is Wednesday, November 23rd. Oh my goodness, is it cold now? Speaking of cold, here's what happened last night, and you're not going to believe me. Some of you just won't believe it, but I don't have any reason to lie about this, so I'm just telling you the black and white facts. <laughs> Driving home from our wonderful jam last night at Dickie's Barbecue. And by the way, while we're talking about Dickie's Barbecue, we jam there every Tuesday evening from uh, 6 o'clock to 8.30 at Dickie's Barbecue Pit in Rolla, Missouri, right in the heart of town there. So stop by and uh, listen to our jam on some Tuesday evening if you get a chance. We had a big crowd last night, nearly a sellout. Driving home from there, I thought, you know, I haven't checked the temperature along the highway and back down to the farm lately so you know I thought I'll better check it just to see how much it drops because it always drops coming down to the farm well I checked it when I got to Doolittle and it was 46 degrees and it stayed 46 degrees exactly until I got past Sugar Tree and actually even past there and then there's this what we call the Jerome Hill coming down to our Jerome exit which is where the farm is and this is a long hill coming down and the temperature started dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping <laughs> as I come down to our valley. And it ended up being 31 degrees when I got to the farm. Now it was 46, you know, for a long way, like over five miles, it was 46 degrees. And then that last mile coming down into the farm, it dropped to 31. So that's 15 degrees it dropped. That's the most I've ever seen it drop. I've seen 13 before, but 15 is quite a bit. <laughs> so there you go. That's why it's cold down here in this valley. That's why I have to cut so much wood. And speaking of cutting wood, that's exactly what I'm going to do today because I put the last of the wood in the furnace last night late around 9 o'clock. There's still enough to keep us going till about noon, but by gosh, we need to get some more wood. And I know some of you are saying, why don't you have that all cut and piled up? Well, you ought to just come and follow me around. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> just do that and then you'll understand. Well, we did have a good uh, vacation, a good deer season. Uh, I put a small deer in freezer camp uh, on the first weekend, uh, actually on the second morning. You know, it was a nice young deer, so it'll be good meat, and uh, it's all cut up and in the freezer. On the very first morning, just barely daylight, I heard a shot, and I knew it was one of the guys hunting on my farm, and sure enough, he killed a great big old wild boar hog. Here's a photo of that. My son took that uh, hog and uh, cut it up and uh, butchered parts of it. Uh, those big wild boars, they're not that great eating, but some parts of them are pretty good, like the tenderloins and the back straps and things are pretty good. So they cut off the best parts and let the rest of it go to the buzzards and the, the coyotes and things like that. I sat out every single time I could, uh, in mornings and evenings, as I should say, all 11 days, except for two evenings. That's all I missed. And uh, that was because of other commitments. You know, I basically just set out looking for either hogs or coyotes and didn't see a single coyote this year, which is very, very unusual, especially considering that all the entrails from all the deer that were killed here and a bunch of deer were killed here. Ron got, I think, three one of the young boys killed two. Uh, Ron's brother, Daryl, got one. There's a neighborhood girl that grew up in our neighborhood. Uh, her husband was here hunting, and uh, anyway, uh, he got a, a doe also. So there was quite a few deer killed here. Uh, and I saw a lot more deer. There's plenty of deer, don't get me wrong. Uh, we didn't hurt the population any. And yet all the entrails from all those deer were basically gone the next day. So that'll give you some idea how many coyotes are here. <laughs> There's a bunch of them and we're feeding a bunch of them. There's a bunch of fat coyotes running around right now. I bet they're all happy. 
but uh, I didn't see any, not a single one, and I usually see several during the season. So I guess they've uh, gone totally nocturnal or something. Let me uh, move on a little bit further and tell you about some other things. I got a gift from Dennis Mart during the vacation, and he sent me a whole box full of banjo parts. And this is a small, I would call it more like a novelty type banjo. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to put it down. That's just kind of what I, the way I look at it. It's because it's not a full size, so I call it more like a novelty type banjo. Or it could be a ukulele banjo or something like that, however you want to refer to it. We've got a couple of necks and uh, a bunch of parts, more parts, and yet more parts. And he sent it to me with a very nice note. Uh, it says, in close, please find some pieces, parts that I uh, no longer need. Hopefully you can use these to repair some customer's instruments. I know you don't charge for uh, parts you receive gratis like this. I respect that policy. Well, that's true. I, I do get a lot of free parts and I just give them away. I don't charge for those kinds of things. I enjoy watching your YouTube videos and I have built a few instruments myself. Keep up the good work. Regards, Dennis Mart from Green Valley, Arizona. Thank you very much, Dennis. We really do appreciate it. And happy Thanksgiving to you. Speaking of happy Thanksgiving, got a Christmas card. <laughs> but it actually says happy Thanksgiving on the inside also. And this came from visitors that were here at the shop, Carol and Randy Denny. And I believe they're from Oak Grove, Missouri. And they've got a nice note in there too. They said they thoroughly loved and enjoyed coming to the shop. It says, I kept thinking of my dad's shop on the farm boxes, tools, lumber, etc. It says Merry Christmas and it also says Happy Thanksgiving. So uh, very nice card. Thank you very much. I enjoyed your visit. While we're on Christmas cards and thank you cards and things like that, I got a nice thank you card from the third grade teachers at the Mark Twain Elementary School for the little show that we played on their Missouri Day festival that they were having, signed by all the teachers, and uh, they just really seemed to enjoy the uh, programs that we put on. As you might recall, we had the whole band there, and we played some music for them, and then we uh, talked about artifacts for another half an hour or so, and the kids seemed to really enjoy it, but I think the kids actually liked the candy I brought more than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned that I was having woes with this $300 uh, brick, which uh, is supposed to be an outdoor camera. Right now it's still a brick. I got a new SanDisk uh, card in for it. It's an SD card. It's a 256 gigabyte and it's a class 3 which is what I understand this thing requires. I put a class 10 in here, I couldn't get it to talk to anything. I don't know if that has any bearing on it or not, so I bought a class three just to try it out. I figure, why not throw more good money after bad right now? Uh, but I'm really disappointed with this. You would think something this innovative would work and or give you some clue why it's not working. Pitiful, in my opinion, just pitiful. I did spend a little bit of time, but very little, back hunting for more relics there on the two lost home sites. And just yesterday afternoon, I found these few items. I found a couple of more shotgun badges. And uh, I'm still looking for an old coin. And if you notice the shape of that, it does look kind of like a coin. Well, the story on this one was I got a really good coin signal. It was a nickel signal, which is fairly common. Lots of things hit on that nickel signal. So I thought, well, this, this is really a positive signal. This sounds like it could very well be a coin, so I'm going to dig it. So I started digging down. I dug a nice deep plug, dumped the plug out on the ground. Then I searched with my pinpointer, didn't find anything. Searched the plug with my pinpointer, didn't find anything. Put the metal detector back over the whole area, didn't find anything. I'm going, it was a perfect signal. Where did it go? I mean, like that never happens. I mean, these things don't lie. If there's a signal, there's something there. And I'm just scratching my head like, what happened to it? I look over on my shovel and stuck to the edge of the shovel, I see this round thing. Just It was just this stuck to the shovel. And I thought, a coin! And it was covered in mud. And of course, when I cleaned it off, it was a shotgun head stamp. But again, these are old, uh, old ones. And 
what's funny about this is that uh, these say uh, REM UMC, which this is when Remington and UMC combined. This particular shell uh, by the catalog was no longer in production in the 1930s. So it has to be probably from the 1920s roughly or earlier. And these two shells. I suspect they're older than that because almost every shell that we find there has been really early 1900s and late 1800s. Some people have made comments that if you're finding shotgun shells, you don't know where the house place is. They, you know, that the shotgun shells are out where they're hunting. They're not, that's not where the house is. Well, you just don't understand hillbilly. That's what the problem is. You know, you've seen the Beverly Hillbillies with their old cabin, you know, when they first started, they had the old cabin and the front porch and they sat out on the rocking chair on the front porch. That's the kind of house we're talking about. These people were sitting out on the front porch. They have a shotgun sitting right next to them and something comes in the yard. They pick up the shotgun and they shoot it. They're gonna shoot more shotgun shells right at their house than any place else on the farm. In fact, that's why they're so condensed there. If these were hunting shells, you know, out hunting, you'd find one here and you'd find one way over there and you'd find one way over there and they wouldn't even be near each other. But, you know, the fact that uh, we're finding such a cluster of them tells you for sure that's where the house was because they were sitting on the front porch or opening up the kitchen window or the bedroom window and poking the gun out the window and then they throw the shell out on the ground. They did, there was no such thing as conserving these things back then. But honestly, that's one of the main reasons I know the house was there because I'm finding so many of these. Then I found another obligatory, uh, you know, harmonica reed thing. Uh, you just have to find these whenever you are metal detecting around an old place. Everybody finds these. I, there must, every single house must have had a harmonica or two. Then I found this, and this is pretty darn unique. It's a, uh, you want to say it's a marble? I, it's not metallic. I don't know what it is. It almost looks like a hand rolled marble, like they rolled it in their hand. It's awfully small. Uh, I would say it's ceramic or clay or something. It just happened to come out of one of the holes that I dug. You know, I was digging for something else and this popped out. I don't know what it is other than just a child's marble, but it's so small. It's smaller than your normal marble, you know. But then again, they didn't have a gauge to measure them and they were just probably making them by hand. You know, I don't know. But anyway, it's pretty cool. I found another, some kind of handmade lead weight type thing. It's, uh, the reason I say handmade is because it's got flat spots on it all over. You can probably see some of them rolling around there. It's just kind of, I don't know what this would be for other than maybe fishing or something, but you know, it could be just that this was, uh, you know, you put wire through there and then you crush it with pliers or something to, you know, to seal something. I, that's kind of what I think it might be, but I don't really know. It might be a weight for, you know, for a curtain or something like that too. I mean, you just, it could be almost anything. Probably my coolest find was this bullet. Uh, it's a um, solid brass case. You notice how these shotgun shells have a primer in the center. That one and this one both. They both have primers in the center. Notice how this bullet does not have a primer in the center, and most bullets do. They're called center fire cartridges. This cartridge predates that. This is a rim fire cartridge. In fact, you can see where the, prime, where the uh, rim had been pressed right there, and uh, that's how this would fire. And it is so, you know, solid brass. Um, I'm guessing roughly 45 caliber. It's so crushed I couldn't really measure it very well, but that's what I'm guessing, roughly 45 caliber. And uh, prob probably black powder. I mean, I really don't know. That's just my guess. I'm gonna try to clean this up some more. I think I can see some little minor printing on the back of it there, and I'm gonna see if I can't read that up later and try to figure that out. But I'm sure it's very old. I would assume 1800s. My two grandsons found something and I'm sure they're gonna to wanna to see their finds on camera. So here they are. My grandson Trinian, the older of the two, found these two items. I think this may have been off of a cast iron stove or possibly a cast iron pot. Um, really don't know for sure, but I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards a stove perhaps meaning, you know, like a 
either a cook stove or a wood stove, probably more like a, a Franklin wood stove, something like that. That's what I'm guessing. Don't really know that for sure. And the cooler thing is, and of course it's cool and not so cool, is that this was a part of a steel trap for, for uh, leg, tra leg traps for like trapping coyotes or some other varmint, you know, coons and things like that. You remember the steel jaws that close? They're not necessarily a cool thing to think about, but on the other hand, it's kind of a neat artifact. Um, this this little lever right here that you can sort of see it's kind of it's all rusted to it there would have been a, a a platform here and this little lever would have stuck in that and when they step on the platform this lever would come out let the jaws close so this is just the trigger part of the of the old trap and then my other grandson Layton found a brass hinge cabinet hinge I'm sure something like that so the boys got a kick out of looking back there also and they got to see the new pond that I built and Trinian is really big into fishing so he's anxious to try to fish the pond unfortunately it had a little bit of ice on it so we couldn't do that <laughs> and my last little note is just a public service announcement in case you were in the market for using these little propane tanks that you you know barbecue with or you know have in a camper or maybe you hook them up to a little uh, propane heater in your shop or whatever. The little 20 pound propane bottles, if you see anybody put more than about 3.9 gallons in one of those, run. My wife, I told her to take the two cans that we had and trade them in because I wanted them for my little hunting cabins. You know, I got little heaters in some of the cabins. Plus I wanted one for my weed burning torch. So she took them to Menards, uh, a large box store here in the local area and uh, they typically would trade you cylinders. Well, this particular day, they didn't have any cylinders to trade. So the little girl goes out there and fills these up and put 4.2 gallons in each one. 3.9, as you may recall, is what I said you shouldn't fill them past. Anyway, I didn't know that. And so I hooked up my weed burning torch to one of those, turned it on, and it just blew the hose up like a balloon instantly. Well, mama didn't raise no fool. I turned the tank right off instantly, and uh, then I disconnected the whole thing and took the torch off of there, and the hose stayed blown up, believe it or not. So then I'm thinking, well, this ain't very good. This is kind of dangerous too. So I was outside, so I took my pocket knife and I stuck it through that lining of that hose and it went pow just like a 22 rifle shell that's how loud it was and that's how much pressure it was under very dangerous well i had already taken the other canister and hooked it up at the hunting cabin but i didn't test it you know now i had done that prior to knowing that there was a problem and of course i didn't necessarily know that there would be a problem with the other tank anyway but i suspected there might be well sure enough one of the hunting guys before i got back there turned it on and uh lucky he didn't kill himself because it shot the pilot light shot a flame out about two feet and uh, it caught the uh, heater on fire burned up the heater cost me a hundred bucks for that <sighs> So I took the propane tanks back to Menards and I explained the situation to them. And I swear to you, the manager that was there, yeah, didn't get it at all. Did you use all the propane, he asked? <sighs> Dumber than a box of rocks. Sorry, but the truth hurts. So beware, be informed. If you ever see them putting more than 3.9 gallons in a propane bottle that's designed for 20 pounds run well i think that's going to be it for today i'm so far behind on things i think i'm in front uh i'm not going to get much done on music today because i've got to get wood cut so as soon as i get this video produced for you guys i'll be heading out to the woods to get a bunch of firewood cut hopefully i can get several loads of firewood cut for today and get at least get it on the ground and we can always haul it later thanks for watching we'll see you tomorrow Bye.